Assalamu alaikum. Uh, our learned uh, Ali, the uh, Imam for the Masjid, the President of the, uh, uh, the Trustees and the organization itself, um, all those who are listening to this uh, uh, program today, I uh, wish you a very good evening and as I said, Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Uh, we've all heard the alims before me, who are obviously far more learned uh, than people like us uh, to be able to talk about on the subject matter. But what I would like to talk about essentially is some of the key attributes of our Rasul. And as with any occasion, the reality is that we use these occasions to be able to reflect upon our own selves as to how we can apply his values, his practices, his teachings, and his various sermons in our own life. Because the very purpose of the last prophet was to essentially seal the, our faith, was to essentially be the last guidance, guidance to all of us as to how we should live our life. Our relationship with our Creator, with our God, is a relationship directly with God. When we make dua, when we do salah, we are trying to talk to directly to our Creator, trying to convey our problems, our issues, our needs, our demands, and our thanks to our Creator. So our Rasul's purpose was to teach us as to how to do that as to how to win God's favor, how to win God, our Creator's favor. Because the ultimate purpose of us being here is not to get a nice topi, or to drive a Pajero, or to become the Tony General. Our main purpose here is to make sure that we go to Jannah. That's where the real ball game is. That's the fundamental issue. And sometimes it's very difficult I know for us to be able to apply that to our daily life. Because we get carried away with our daily life. We get carried away with the material world. We get carried away with status, with our positions, with our status in society. Hum president ban gaya, hum businessman ban gaya, hum minister ban gaya, hum alage bada motor hoi gaya, bada ghar hoi gaya. And our pursuit of those things can help us in fact or we deviate from the path that we're supposed to be on. Tarat al the straight path. So the purpose of our Prophet was here to tell us how to stay on the Tarat al What do we do? So what I thought in fact, I, was, I knew I'd be slightly late uh, and not come right into the program from the beginning. Uh, but what I thought that I would like to talk about today and reflect upon today uh, is the last sermon of the Rasul. And as we all know, and the Ali will tell us, that was given on Mount uh, Arafah, 623 AD, 623 years after Isa alayhi salam. In, I'm not going to read the entire sermon or entire speech or his khutbah, as you may say. But I like to pick out some of the main points and how perhaps we can apply to our lives and perhaps how we are deviating from that path. So he says, and I quote, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear, an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall be amongst you again, ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen carefully to what I am saying and take this word to those who could not be present here today. And obviously, we are talking about his words today, even though he's not here with us. But his first line, what does it indicate to us? He's saying, I may not be here next year. It means that we are all mortal. अभी हम यहाँ बैठा है अपनी स्पीच खड़ा है स्पीच देता है और यहाँ से निकलेगा आई मेरे बाहर से मैं कुत्ता है तो चिप आई एम बोर्न 
Somebody may have a car accident. Death is an inevitability. In other words, it will happen no matter what happens. So if we are, if we know that we may not be around next year, and he is a great prophet telling us that he may not be here next year. Even he is not sure about his death, when he will die. Only our creator knows. We should be heedful of that. We should be mindful of that. We should be good to those who are close to us. Your husbands, your wives, your children, your neighbors, your relatives, people you transact with, do business with, people who you may teach or work with, people who come to the same mosque as you. Because in our lives, getting carried away with our lives, we take perhaps each other for granted. And correct me, one of the the, the, the sunnah of the Prophet was he always, if there was any argument with any close person, he, he wanted to go to bed. Before he went to bed, he would like to resolve the issue. And he said, you try and resolve it two days later. If you don't know whether you wake up or not, you don't know whether they'll wake up or not. There are so many people who said, "Arey bad kalleta, right ho jata." So that guilt should not be there. So the first thing he says, and the next point that he makes, and I'm not going to read like I said all, all of it. He says, regard the life and property of everyone as a sacred trust. Regard the life and property of everyone as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Remember, you will indeed meet your Lord and he will indeed reckon your deeds. If you have been given somebody's property, if you are transacting in property or goods, make sure that your dealings are always straight. Take out a little bit here and there. You must, and you must be known, and indeed, as I have always said previously, if you look at the largest Muslim populated country in the world today is Indonesia. There was no Arab army that went to Indonesia. There was no invasion of, Indi of Indonesia, sorry. No invasion, no Arab army went to Indonesia or invaded Indonesia or first conversions, etc. The Arab traders used to go to Indonesia for spices. And those people saw their behavior. They saw how they had their dealings. Everything was straightforward. Their word was good as gold, as good as it being written on paper. And it was their behavior, their manners, their truthfulness, their honesty, that Indonesia became today the largest country in the world, most important country in the world. So how we act, how we transact is very important. And the Prophet is telling us that. If you have family members, somebody dies in the family, the children's property is there, you are entrusted to that. It is theirs. Don't take a single cent out of it. You have to be honest. Iman Dari is very, very important. And therefore, he's saying, essentially, God is watching us. God is saying, God is watching us. Now, the next line he says here, you don't hurt people. Do unto others what others may do unto you. This is a very famous saying. Jhut ke koi ke taklif nahi do. In fact, if you know ki koi ke taklif padi, you don't do that in the first place. And I know sometimes it can be very difficult for people. Spare the moment they say things, they do things. You know, the Prophet used to say, if you are angry, if you're standing up and you're angry, sit down. If you're sitting down, you're angry, lie down. 
यहाँ से कोई चीज निकले है फ्रॉम द टंग यू कैनोट एवर गेट इट बैक रिमेम्बर दैट यू कैनोट गेट एनी वर्ड दैट वंस इट डिपार्ट्स योर टंग इट्स गॉन एंड दिस थिंग कैन कोस ऑन द ग्रेटेस्ट हेल्पफुलनेस एवर गुस्सा में आए के इन एंगर यू मे से समथिंग यू हेल्प समबडी In your moment of arrogance, you may some, say something that will hurt somebody. Don't do that. Now he says, "You will neither inflict nor suffer in inequality. Allah has judged that there should be no interest, and all interest due shall be paid." Again, there are many people I know in Fiji. They are actually charged money lenders. Some of them are, of course, Muslims too. It's forbidden because it is oppressive. Some people are charging 30% as money lenders. Don't do that. It won't do you well. Beware of Satan for the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope. that he will be able to lead you astray in big things so be aware of following him in small things if you follow your religion satan is frightened of you satan so he you won't be able to do any big sins but be aware of the small sins chote chote baat se dhar ya thoda gibat kar do ya thoda u bol do small things jhoot ke daat do I was listening. I mean, I'm a great fan of Hazrat Ali because he had some great sayings, and I just came across one of his sayings about three days ago, coincidentally. And he said, "The worst of our faults is our interest in other people's faults. The worst of our faults is our interest in other people's faults." हम लोग के सबसे बड़ी गलती है कि हम लोग दूसरे के गलती में दिलचस्पी रखते हैं हम लोग के सबसे बड़ी गलती ये है कि हम लोग दूसरे के दिलचस्पी में दूसरे के गलती में दिलचस्पी रखते हैं तुम जनता बोले वैसे खरीस रहा देखा वो रोज हम देखा वो मस्जिद में इस लेफ्ट बोर्ड में आई गया But that's one of our greatest problems at the moment. These are small things. Ha, ah, humne koi ke khun nahi karta hai, to bada bada crime nahi karta hai, but ye chota chota cheez bhi build up hai. And in fact, these small things create disunity. These small things help us not to love one another. Is it the Alim Saab who said it? Islam is about peace. If we do these small mistakes, small sins continuously, it will lead to people not liking each other. It will cause friction. It will cause harm. These are very, very important issues that we need to be able to face. Oh, people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah. Say your five daily prayers. fast during the month of ramadan and give your wealth in zakat perform hajj if you can afford it very straight forward i think you all understand that all mankind is from adam and eve adam or hawa all mankind an arab has no superiority over a non arab an arab has no superiority over a non arab no a non arab any superiority over an arab sab ko ek barabar to jo soche hai ki quran arabic mein hai to koi arab ke hai bhai bolo hum se thoda badh chad ke no they are the same then he also say goes one step ahead when you are facing these issues in countries like usa today also a white has no superiority over black No a black has any superiority over white except 
by piety and good action. Black and white for all equal. Easier said than done. Hey, Malaysia, ni mata lelaki sahdi, hey, untuk tera sawar, tera kerja. It's a fact. I don't want my daughter to marry that boy. He's too dark. I don't want my son to marry that daughter, that girl. She's too dark. Hey, boy, untuk bar kari kerja. Basic. It may sound like you know we're saying it in jest, but bitter people have that feeling. That's what the prophet said. This is 1400 years, nearly 1600 years ago. Today in America they say black lives matter. Black lives matter. And this is of course one of the reasons why Islam spread in so many countries where there is a lot of discrimination either through caste or because of color. Because Islam does not know any difference. I have people who've asked me, they come and see me pray in the masjid. They said, oh, you come, you stand next to somebody, you don't have a special spot for you? I said, no, we don't have that. I come late, I will come back. I come a bit earlier, I may be there. Somebody may be praying, he may be a banker. Somebody may be a cleaner. Somebody may be a minister. Somebody may be an alim. Somebody may be a teacher. That's the beauty of it. That's what we call practicing equality. It's been realized. And he said, piety obviously and good actions matter. How we deal with each other. How close we are to God. That's what really matters at the end of the day. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember, one day you will meet Allah and answer your deeds. So beware, do not stray from the path of the righteousness after I am born. That's, that's the message we should have today. Our Rasul is not with us, but his message is with us. His sermon is with us. And he's basically saying, follow that path. Do not stray away from that. O people, no prophet or apostle will come after thee, and no new faith will be born. Reason well, therefore, O people, and understand words that are conveyed to you. I leave behind two things, the Quran and the Sunnah. And if you follow these, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others, and those to others again. The Hadith. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. O oh Allah, be my witness that I have conveyed your message to your people. This is the gist of his message. And if we listen to the gist of his message, but more importantly, seek to apply it to our daily lives. That's the beauty of it, the simple thing. I was just talking to somebody in the car, his army was going and there's a dog, a female dog that gave birth to puppies. And he told the forge to go around it so she may deal with the puppies. Disturb nature all. <laughs> it's a fact. The Prophet told us not to be cruel to animals. The Prophet told us when we go, when, even when you go in a war, don't cut down trees. Don't harm non-combatants. Don't harm women and children. If they're in the war, they're not fighting. Don't harm them. Today, everybody thinks everything is just. Everything is permissible. Where is the justice? So equally, given those, those teachings, Muslims should always stand up for injustice. Even though the injustice may not be done to you, but even if it's done to somebody else, you must stand up and speak up. That's your duty. 
with your furs. Because that is a characteristic of a Muslim. Don't stand up to racism. Don't stand up to the poor person being oppressed. You need to do something positive about it. Nobody's saying go and fight, but do something positive about it. You must be known for that because that is a characteristic of our prophet. We all know the story. The lady who used to throw rubbish at him all the time. Every time he walked past this alleyway, she used to throw rubbish. And they did not like him. He used to clear the rubbish and keep on walking. What will be our reaction? You walk down the alleyway and somebody throws rubbish at you. What will you do? Will you act like a prophet? Or will you act like a person of this world? And then the day, one day he walked past and she was, she was nowhere to be seen. No rubbish was thrown. So he went and inquired. He said, where is this woman who used to throw rubbish? He said, oh, she's sick. That's why she's not there to throw rubbish at you. So he went and visited her. And she became his friend. Is that level of self-realization, is that level of understanding, you'll be able to do that if we constantly remind ourselves that we are not here for this world. It's very important. I've been in the West for the past few days. And believe you me, I've had about three or two people complain to me about how some family members booted them out of their land. Or somebody gave them some place to build their house and they've now booted them out. Family members, brothers. Where is the hamdardi? Where is the insaniyat? Where is the lack of willingness to ensure that there is no zulum, or oh, there is no zulum. Zulum is injustice. That's unjust. It's a very basic fundamental thing. So we have to remember this on this day. And we are lucky to have such allies who can remind us of that. But I just wanted to highlight to you, and I know it's getting late, it's a curfew at 11 p.m., and I know you want to have your dinner soon, so it won't be very long. I just want to highlight to you is critically important that we apply the teachings of our Rasul in our everyday life. Please, I urge you to read his last sermon. Understand what it actually means. It also talks about relationship between husband and wife and how both of you are equal with each other. Both of you have rights over each other. How many of us actually adhere to that? These things are critically important. And if we adhere to that, if we are able to follow those teachings, nowadays, you know, we have Facebook. These young boys, unfortunately, and girls have Facebook. Some of you have Facebook. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, that person has said this, that person has said that. Muskaro. If you know you have not done anything wrong, if you know that you are speaking the truth, if you know that you are not corrupt, what is there to worry about? Yes, of course, people may slander you, people may take action, but you should go to bed with peace in mind. Aram Sasuto. Because if you have not done anything wrong, God will take care of you. Allah Hawale. Very basic, but you must believe that. That is why it is critically important to ensure that every single thing you do, that you remember that we have to be honest in our business. Every single thing we do, we need to adhere to what the Prophet has taught us. Every single thing we do, we must know we are not breaking any of the messages in the Quran. Life is very simple then. In fact, many people have said Islam is a very simple religion. Hardly any rituals. Before you have to get married, you have to have 25 camels, 30 horses, whatever it was. The Rasul's time made it very simple. You have the nikah. No fanfare. You invite a few people, have your walima, and that's it. 
So because before only the rich could get married. So it brought about equality. What is zakat about? It's about equality. It's about looking after the poor. Very basic teaching. So I'd like to once again thank the committee, the organization for the invitation. Uh, and I know that uh, they've stuck to their guns with the invitation. I'd like to thank them and I respect them for that. Uh, because really, in, 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 in life, you should not be scared to do things if you're doing the right thing. It's a fundamental message to you. And I want to wish all of us uh, a life in which we stick to the Sunnah, we stick to the, the, the Quranic verses, and we're able to live our lives in a peaceful manner. Inner peace is critically important, as opposed to idle peace. I'd like to, of course, thank all the Alis and for their presence here. And please forgive me if I've said anything uh, that is not correct. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.